Whether you are new to lighting or you are a professional at it, this is a software that I think you might find interesting. So I wanted to talk about a software that I have been using for about six months now, and I have been using it in pretty much every project that I've done across the last six months because it is super, super useful. And that is called HDR Light Studio. Now this is a little bit misleading by the name because it says it's an HDR light studio, but it actually can create just every light in your scene. It can do more than just an H it's more than just an HDRI uh, creation software. It also creates area lights and stuff, which is honestly where the power of it really comes in, in my opinion, and makes it super, super fun to light and makes you work a lot faster. Now, I have talked with the developers of this, but I am not sponsored by them. They're super nice people. There's like four of them in the company total, uh, counting the, the two founders. So small business, but they have an amazing tool here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it is. I've just got a scene set up here. This is a bus from 3dscans.com. Then I just have a backdrop here, which I've set up in the scene, and I've just set up a simple redshift material on it. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in and create the HDR Light Studio connection. And this software actually works with a ton of different softwares. So Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, all those it's going to work with. And it works really well with a bunch of different renders as well. In Houdini, we have a few different options. There's all of these. And because Mantra and Karma are the same, technically, as far as creating lights, I mean, Technically, it does work with Karma, but there's still some bugs, so it doesn't really work uh, perfectly with Karma yet. Hopefully, that's something that we can get them to to fix, but uh, right now, it's not something that is fully working, especially with Karma being in beta. So hopefully, that's something we'll see in the future. I did reach out to them and ask them, but I haven't heard back uh, as far as a definitive on that. So. Let's go ahead and set this as Redshift because that's what I'm going to use for this demonstration. It works super, super well with Redshift. Redshift ro uh, loads really quickly. So we have an IBL hook here. We can create a new one and, or we can select one or we can create a new one in here, or we can just click the start and that's going to give us the option to create one here. And I'll go ahead and click okay and it's gonna launch the software for us. And this is a new update. So it was just updated within the last month here to HDR Light Studio 8. And there comes with a ton of quality of life improvements as well as some new lights. And the way that lighting kind of works in this software is more like what you would find in a like an actual photography studio, which makes it super, super powerful. We have all different sorts of lights that you would find in the light studio or uh, photography studios as well. And we've got a new one called Scrim Lights, which I'm gonna be showcasing in this video just because it is new and it is something that I use or that I've been using and find uh, to be one of the best lights in here, in my opinion. But we have a few different windows in here. We have our, our light set up here. So this is our light list. We have a light look section here, which basically allows us to create different lighting setups and switch between different ones to see which ones we like the best. You have all of our different lights in here. We have a canvas down here, which is where we'll do part of our lighting. We have our settings over here and then a light preview up here that I'm not really going to touch. That's actually going to be where I'm going to put my redshift here in just a moment. And then we have a render view here. And unfortunately in Houdini, if we go ahead and press this play and we click import, this is going to create a or create our scene with an IPR that is running natively in the software. So this doesn't actually bring up the Redshift or the Octane or whatever render you're using inside the software. And that is one of the things that is specific to Houdini and other softwares. It is uh, the actual viewport of your your render engine. Uh, like Houdini or uh, Octane or, or Redshift inside Cinema 4D is one that I know that it does work. Unfortunately, due to some limitations of Redshift or whatever it is, they were not able to do that for Houdini. So we're going to pull up our Redshift here. And let's go ahead and restore that. I'll go ahead and press the play button there. And you can see that the light loads up into our scene here. So I can go ahead and just delete that by right clicking and you have all of our lights in here, which we can just drag and drop in here. We also have the ability to 
edit HDR that we bring in from like HDR um, Haven. So if I just bring this one in, we could actually edit this with some different tools. Uh, we can up the exposure and lower the exposure. We could rotate it, whatever we want to do. But I'm not going to go too much into that because that's not really how I work. I actually pretty much just exclusively light it with the lights in here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We also have the ability to just drop in some different light rigs here. So if I drop one in, it's going to create a studio setup just inside of the software here. You can see that it updates really, really quickly inside of our Redshift render view as well. So maybe we don't like that. We can select those all. We'll just delete those. Maybe we drag in a different one and you can see we get a different lighting look there. Super quick and easy. I'm just going to delete a bunch of those lights. So we have this little background here. I'm going to press Q to bring up the brightness in our viewport and just up that a little bit. We have our different modes here for what our what we can do in the viewport. So we can move the lights, we can affect all of the settings basically we have over here in our light properties. Oops, in our light properties. And then we have different placement methods here. So let's come back over to these lights. Let's go to lights and let's go down to the scrim lights because I want to take a look at those because they are new. There we are, scrim lights. Let's go ahead and drag and drop one of these into our scene. You can either drag it into the scene or into the, the light list here and it'll create a light for you. Now by default, it makes an HDRI, but we can make the, the lights actually area lights as well, if we would like. But let's take a look at these selection or placement methods here real quick. So if I have it set to reflection, it's going to place it based off of the reflection. So I can click on our model here and it's going to place our reflection wherever I click. If I want to have the reflection down here, get our reflection down here. I can click and drag and it'll move the light all around. I can also click down here and move our light that way if I want to do that. So all sorts of different ways to actually place lights in our scene. If I want to come to the illumination, we can do it based off of the illumination. If I want to illuminate our backdrop, whatever I can do, we can place our lights that way. I also have the ability to create a rim light, which doesn't work real well because I have a backdrop in here, so it's going to block that. But we can get around that if I press this area light button. That's going to make that light an area light. And then I can use this smart dolly to bring that into our scene in front of the actual backdrop that I have in the background. And you can see that we have the backdrop set up here. Let's go ahead and maybe get a little bit better here. It's a little bit hard to see, so let's go ahead and turn off the camera visibility. And you can see it's going to disappear from our view inside of Redshift. So we can control camera visibility as well, which is pretty sweet. We can adjust the brightness in here. We can lower that. We can move this around. So if we have this move set, we can click and drag and it's going to move it around. Let's actually do this with the reflection because it's a little bit more visible here. So if I click and drag and move this around, you can see that it's moving it around. If I move down here, it's going to kind of move our light all over the place. But if I select a spot that I like, maybe I want to move this just a little bit up but I don't want to move it just by clicking. I just want to move it just to kind of in a tiny little bit. You can take that move relative tool and we can click and drag up and it's going to move our light up instead of just moving it to wherever the cursor is. You can see I can click over here. I'm clicking right now and it's not moving it over there. Wherever I click in the scene, I can kind of move it that way by clicking and dragging. So that's a huge quality of life thing that uh, was not in version in the last version. So glad they added that in version eight here. But if I take a look, like I said, these are called scrim lights. So the way that these lights work is basically it's like a light that is shining at a piece of paper that's diffusing the light. Uh, horrible explanation of that. They have a much better explanation on their website. So if you want to learn more about scrim lights, go there. But we can come to this appearance and we have different settings in here. So we can take this and we can move this around in the actual uh, the actual like paper area. So this is where the paper would be, this little square. So as we move this around, it's going to affect the way that the light looks. Let's go ahead and move that back towards the center. We can move the light backwards 
and forwards to create different looks there. We can make it a harsher light, we can make it a softer light. Maybe I want to, we also have hotkeys here, maybe I want to change the spread, so I'll press T. We'll kind of focus that down and that focuses that light. Or I want to make it real soft and come back in here. Whoops. Press Q and bring up our brightness here. And we can get a much softer light here. So all sorts of different tools to create the, the light that you're looking for. There's a ton of different things. We can also blend between different lights. I'm not going to go into that here. But we have all sorts of different things. We can change it to a gradient. We have our scrim light. We have different sides of how, like how many sides the, the light has. So you can see we can kind of change the shape of the light, which is pretty cool. So a ton of different settings, a ton of different ways to take control of your lighting. And these are all HDR lights as well. So they work really, really well with lighting inside of whatever application you're using. You can drag the exposure up and down and you're not gonna get uh, like super blown out areas. Uh, you can also, I don't know if I mentioned that with the, the HDRI Haven lights, but you can create image blockers so you can create like uh, you can take your HDR eyes and basically kind of manipulate them however you want. Not fully however you want, but you can manipulate them and get much finer control over your HDR eyes that you've downloaded from wherever you've downloaded them from than what you have over just throwing in a, an HDR eye. So a ton of different things that you can do. They are very good about documenting it on their YouTube channel. So take a look uh, at all the different things that you can do there. But this program is free to try. It has a, a trial. It does have a watermark, which makes it a little bit hard to test out. But if you work inside your viewport here, it works really well. And uh, the watermark is on there. Just uh, another thing here, you can come into the render view settings. And if you have area lights, you can turn on this fast area lights. It'll clean up the image a little bit. You can also up the samples to get a little bit cleaner image there. But anyways, like I said, test out this, this software because I think it's going to make you work a lot faster when it comes to lighting. It's going to make you a better lighter if you're not very good at lighting. I personally don't think that I'm the best at, at lighting. And this makes it, and actually I, I really hate lighting in all honesty. I, I don't enjoy it. Uh, but this software actually makes it a, a lot more fun to, to light my, my scenes. So I actually kind of somewhat enjoy it. When I'm when I'm using this this software, so like I said, I've been using it for six months now, and in pretty much every project that I've done, I've used it, and it's made my life a whole lot easier. I think that it's made my renders uh, just a little bit better as well. So, like I said, take a look at it. It is free to try. Take a look inside your your viewport and here your IPR, and if you think that it works uh, really well, then that's something that you probably want to pick up. But Anyways, hopefully this helps you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini on my channel. I do plan on covering this more in the future with how I kind of work inside of it. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully we can get some of that out pretty soon here. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.